Hi there, for CAD Microsystems, I'm Donnie Gladfelt here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to model medians using Civil 3D corridors. Now, if you've used Civil 3D for any time, you have probably noticed at least once or twice that we do have a medians subassembly tab here in Civil 3D, and it gives me all sorts of wonderful options, but admittedly, how to actually put those options to use is probably not the most obvious thing in the world. I'm going to try to fix that in this video. So before we get to the median, though, we need to first talk about the lane. You can see here I've already modeled just a simple crowned road here. And this, in fact, is the assembly I used to build the corridor that you see here. Nothing too special about that. However, what is perhaps different from the way you might have approached this otherwise, instead of choosing a subassembly such as lane super elevation AOR, I instead chose lane from tapered median one. Why did I do that? Well, let's go into the whole file to take a look at this. So the big difference here with the tapered median um, subassemblies is unlike the other lane assemblies that only let me set a lane width, the tapered median subassemblies let me set both a lane width as well as a median edge. Why that's important to me is because I can have a case here where I have a crowned road, so it performs just like any other lane assembly in Civil 3D or subassembly in Civil 3D, or I can have a divided median or I can even have the lane cross the center line or attachment point here. So if we take a look at that in plan view, you can see here I have just a standard crowned road in case one. In case two, I have that divided median and it's transitioning here, but then it needs to cross the center line for that left turn lane. This subassembly will let me do that. Now, you might be wondering what's the difference between tapered median one and tapered median two? Well, the difference is tapered median two lets me set a slope for both the inside lane and outside lane versus tapered median one has a single constant slope. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. So that's the big thing with the corridor that I already have in place. Now, what I need to do now is actually set up the targets for my median in this case. Now, I do have a polyline in this drawing, and I could go through the process of converting that into either a feature line or alignment, but in order to make this all work, I need to have elevations there. And I want to acquire those in the easiest way possible. And this is where Civil 3D 2018 comes to the rescue because if we come down here to the Create Offset Alignment, we've had this tool for a while, but there's a big new feature inside of this. I'm going to pick on that alignment, my center line here. And in my case, I know that my median is a total of 16 feet, so eight feet on either side. Nothing too different here, but the big new feature we have in 2018 is this Create Offset Profile. What this is going to let me do is pick the uh, finished grade profile for this road, and then also select the cross slope for it. Now, the important thing is this is going to be dynamically linked to the center line. So if I change the profile for the center line, it's also going to update the offset profile. So it's all going to be linked in this case. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and you'll see I now have two new alignments that represent the edge of my medium. Pretty awesome. Now, the next thing I need to do is build the assembly I'm going to use to actually model the median in this case. So how do I do that? Well, first things first, we're going to come up here and create a new assembly. And I'm going to just call this median. I'm going to go ahead and pick over here kind of to the right. It doesn't really matter where I select, but we're going to go ahead and do that. And then the important thing here, the secret here is I'm going to create an offset assembly as well. Basically, this is going to be my right median alignment. And then the offset I'm going to do here is going to be my left median alignment. So what I need to do now is put the pieces and parts into place here. So I'll go ahead and start with just a uh, regular urban curb and gutter. We'll go ahead and um, put that in right there. I'll put this guy in right here. And um, so there's my curb and gutter. Nothing too fancy there. Next, what I want to do is come over here to my median. And we'll just go ahead and do something simple, this median with raised crown. Uh, if I go into the help file for this, take a look. The attachment point is on the left. 
that's where I'm going to um, go ahead and place this. But then the operative thing here, the way we make this actually work is with this marked point. So let me walk you through this step here. First things first, I'm gonna pick the raised crown right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick the top back of curb on the left-hand side right there. And I'm gonna get something looking like this. Now, if I were to model this right now, I would get this sort of gap that I see here, but we don't want that, of course. So what I'm going to do is come down here to generic. On the generic tab, I have the option for a mark point. What I'm gonna do with this is go ahead and place it right here on the right top back of curb. I'm gonna just pick right there. And if I go ahead and pick that, we're gonna go ahead and call this R-TBC in my case, okay? And I'm just gonna set that for both the name and the code for right top back of curb. Nothing too special there. Now, that's basically going to establish this target that I need to assign now to my median. So if I pick on my median subassembly, you'll notice that one of the properties I have here is called marked point. Right now it says none. If I just go ahead and paste in the code that I named the marked point, RTBC in my case, that is going to tell Civil 3 d how I wanna glue all of this together. Pretty awesome, right? So let's take a look at this now. What I can do is now pick on my corridor. I'm gonna go ahead and um, edit the targets real quick. So I'm just gonna pick into here. And in my case, I'm going to set the median edge alignments in this case. So uh, first things first, this is for the right-hand side. Uh, I'm going to pick the median right eight foot right here. We'll just add that as the target. And for the median edge alignment on the left, we'll just go ahead and pick the left eight foot offset right there. And when I say okay, it's probably gonna tell me, nope, it rebuilt it for me. Now you can see I have cut a hole in my road in this case. So the next thing I need to do is go ahead and actually apply the median. So to do that, what I'm going to do is come in here to corridor properties and I am going to come over here to parameters. Now, what I'm going to do is add a baseline to this alignment. So if I go to baseline, I'm going to, I'll name it baseline or BL median in my case. And I'm going to assign this to the right hand side because that was the primary assembly. The assembly offset is for the left hand side. So I'm gonna have this follow the right hand side of my road. And what I'm going to do here is for the vertical, I'm going to pick that profile. And that's basically added that baseline to my corridor. Now, what I need to do is now add a region to this as well. So I'm going to add that region, assign the median assembly in my case, and this is what I end up with. Now, this is where things can get a little complicated, and if you're not careful, you can get in a little bit of trouble here. So we have the assembly set. When I did that, I now have this offset. Keep in mind the offset should always be for the left-hand side. So if I come over here, I'm going to pick the left alignment, and the left eight foot profile and say, okay, here. So in my case, if I say, okay, now we'll rebuild my corridor. And when I do, I should have a road with a median in the middle right there. And so there you have it. That is how we model a civil 3D corridor with a divided median. For CAD Microsystems, I'm Donnie Gladfelter. Thanks so much for watching.